Okay, the Wheelhouse Cycling Podcast, starting with a few headlines. The Tour de France goes back to the future. Mark Cavendish might go future to the back. Demi Vollering surprises no one. And the Pro Velo League confronts the realities of launching in a cost of living crisis. This is the Wheelhouse Cycling Podcast, and I am, what the hell are you wearing? <laughs> Happy Halloween. <laughs> oh, I thought we were here to do a serious news service podcast. We are, we are very serious. Catherine Bates, and, talk us uh, through your get up. When you have young children, Halloween is serious. Uh, and the four little rugrats, well, they're dressing up as all sorts of things. Uh, later I will be stuffing stockings um, with the insides of a pillow to make a spider. Oh, yeah, uh, as for you the do. seven year old. Yeah. Yes, so I'm dressed as a skeleton. Well, look, we're behind a desk here. Hank Vogels is yeah. here as well. I'm sure he would agree that our uh, l- lovely listener base needs to see the costume. So, will you I'll show stand us? Up. Yeah, of course. Okay, let's. I might have to woo, go. Can we? <laughs> there you go. <laughs> there you go. That, that's some really, really good. I don't um, really know how I'm supposed to pose. I don't know how I'm supposed to. You're trying to be scary. You're trying to be. Oh, scary! scary. No, I'm a fun skeleton. Why did? I don't know. Why do skeletons have to be scary? Because they're dead, maybe. I feel like skeletons have been given a bad rap. Yeah. Yeah. Merksy, that was some good camera work. Uh, Mm. Welcome to you. Yeah, guys, I've done some stupid shit for this show, but um, this takes the cake. This takes the cake. Merksy, you're you're a Mister Skeleton. Yeah. If I'm Madam, you're Mister. Talk about no shame, eh? Good. (laughs) I've missed the memo, obviously. Looking good. Yeah, no. Oh, yeah. Totally Your kids are all grown up now. Yeah. Grandpa, I'm like, maybe I'm like it's... I like the Grinch. Uh, it's I not, lock the door now. How long until you take the uh, grand... Daughter. Granddaughter. Actually, that's all probably beginning Trick or treating. soon too. Yeah, yeah. it's oh, the right. next wave. I can lend her my costume if you like. Okay, well, Eddie yeah. Munster, grows up I've a little. been saying, Merksy doesn't realise it, but he's homaging the great Eddie Munster uh, with his get up today. Uh, Michelle Pfeiffer called. She wants her Batman Returns <laughs> costume back as soon as you possible. Know, I went through a period where I was like, oh, we're not American. Why are we celebrating Halloween? You know what? It's fun. It's just that simple. Why not? Like, yeah. if you can get away with walking around town dressed up as a skeleton for a day, why not? Do you have boots on? Uh, like- I don't yet. But um, that's something she can organise later I, on yeah. this evening. By this evening, I will have boots and makeup. But- and maybe like a whip? Is that, a, is that a whip? Okay, that, that's you're moving thinking on. of Catwoman. Ah, oh, sorry, wrong. Not wrong. You're not skeleton. Skelly Woman. No, yeah, oh. yeah, no. I might have led you off, and I'm um, <coughs> I'm dressed up too. This is as yes. my wife tells me of every every day when I leave the house. Are you you dressed up? Really I don't know that. a puma. If I knew a puma athlete, yeah. I'd say you're dressed up. No, no, I'm, them, no, I'm, but... the, I'm a panther. It's not. Oh, I'm I a, say I'm a scary panther. Yeah, God. Right. She goes, when are you leaving the house looking like an absolute horror story today, Joel? I said, perfect, it's Halloween. That's just what I was going for. Okay, let's get into it. So, lot to talk about. You had a, a rather large ride on the weekend. Let's talk about the uh, Sister of the Saddle. You, look, you looked on happy Friday. in the photo. Yes. You looked happy. Did I? Yeah. You could see the happiness beyond the red face. Beaming. colour. Yes. Uh, I did the Sisters of the Saddle ride. I did Friday. It was a three-day ride. I could only manage Friday. Uh, about 100k in mm. territory that you did warn me last week, Hank. It's was not flat. Not flat. No. Uh, <laughs> yes. Yep. Elevation. Um I concur yeah. is what I will say. But it, it was a cracker start because Queensland Rail gave us our own train. I love that. It was so cool. I can't believe they did that. I know. So what do you mean gave you a train? Well, to borrow. Well, you uh, borrowed a train. Like yeah, a... we did. Did you uh, get to drive it? No, but the Why driver not? was lovely. He was chatting to he us let you have a periodically. Go. I mean, I Hank's, Hank's driven a train, remember? This he night? has. The TV. The TV. TV. A no, picker. we didn't. But we went from Nanda to uh, Yandina. Yep. That's it Hank's way. Yeah, it was fantastic. Yeah, great. It was so cool to have a train to ourselves. It was yeah. very great. Uh, and, yeah, look, the ride was fantastic. And, and, and I heard you're getting into triathlon. Well, the Noosa try no, is no, not that. Like up. I heard, you may have had. A yeah, oh no, yes, a a kit swim. I did. I had a quick kit swim. Yep, we in got the middle to of the ride. Lake Catharaba, <clears throat> and it was oh, lunchtime. Yeah. It was hot. Yeah, very, very hot. Yeah. And I pulled in, and I said, "I'm going swimming." And they looked at me like I was mad. Yes. And nobody joined me. Um, but I took the jersey off, and well, Nick the jersey sport, off. Yeah, Nick's in my crop top. And I went for a swim. Yeah, and it no, was one, very no one got refreshing. in. They took socks off and walked in, yeah. but 
nobody was keen so for a spin. Good. Keep the core temperature down. That's smart. Yeah, it was fantastic. Clever. And look, it was a brilliant ride. Mm. It was tough. Like I, I was suffering out there. But as we said for Brisbane to Gold Coast, yeah. uh, they're raising money for some incredible causes, one of which is children uh, who are affected by domestic violence when mm. they're um, relocated from their homes and struggling to get back to school because they don't have the supplies. Mm. Uh, and so Zephyr works with those families and helps the kids. Like, what a great cause. Yeah, it is. Uh, and also Traction, which is a charity that uh, helps enable, empower, and skill up kids. Mm -hmm. mm. Uh, and they use, you know, a lot of bike workshops and stuff to do it. So it's great. They've they've raised just over 300 grand, pushing toward 400, which is what uh, they got to last year. Just mm -hmm. an incredible community. Yeah. And uh, look, I've seen through um, the Amy Gillett Foundation and Amy's Ride down in Lawn, where everybody gets together to raise money and to be a community around road safety. Mm. And cycling is a real vehicle for change. Mm -hmm. And from Brisbane to Gold Coast to Sisters of the Saddle um, to Amy's Ride, I have felt it every time I've been on these rides. So, so good for community. And, yeah, I'm not really that fit. And mm. so physically it was a struggle. But toughen up. Like it, it reminded me on all of those occasions that we're out there because people – are having troubles. They need help. They need yep. our help. And if the most uncomfortable thing for me is that I'm not fit enough to grovel up some hills that you probably undersold, mm. if I'm honest, Hank. Yeah, I was trying not to scare you. Uh, yeah. Uh, well, uh, I know today. now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, so it was it was brilliant. And I hope to be fit enough to do all three days next Well done. Year. Well Thank done, you. Kate, because that, yeah, I know those roads up there and they're nasty and, mm. um, and they're not smooth and... And um, obviously it was a hot day, so you, you've it done was. you've done well. It you've was. done three well, in the last. What so was good on you. really encouraging is it was so well organised. So shout out to Bronwyn Victor um, and the team, Emily, for pulling it all together. But we went on some roads that were reasonably narrow and close to a quarry, and so they had some big trucks that mm. were coming. So they had radios. They radioed through to the quarry. And the trucks knew we were coming and everybody communicated really well. It was mm. wonderfully safe. Nobody had a single moment where they didn't feel safe on mm. the road, which mm. is just incredible and a very good reminder that we can share roads. Mm -hmm. Yes. But, you know, everybody just has to play their part. So it, it was yeah. great for that too. Oh, that's that's fantastic. Uh, well done. Thank you. I remember last episode you were talking about that part of the world, Hank. Is mm. it very hilly? <laughs> and Hank said... Ah, yeah. It'd be, 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 be a bit tough. I said maybe a bit lumpy. A bit lumpy. A bit lumpy. You lied. I, well, <laughs> you no, lied. No, but Hank Vogel saying something is a bit lumpy or a bit tough is probably someone else saying that's like walking up Everest in bare yes. feet. Mm. So, yes. Well, I, then let's see how he describes Von 2 yeah. when, we, uh, <laughs> oh, when yeah. we talk about that. Let's talk about that right now. So the Tour de France 2025 route has been announced and uh, they just want Pog to take out a fourth by the look of it, just make oh. it as hilly as possible. Well, Grishan Neiman uh, from Yumbo, he said Vingegaard Jonas couldn't be there, uh, but he thinks he'll be, and I quote, rather pleased He's chuffed, with won't this he? route. Yeah, I reckon it'd be pretty stoked. This is a very hard Tour de France. It, well, and they're saying, Hank, like, Back to tradition because not a single kilometre outside of France. Well, that's I, I find that – how do I put this? Like they do it for, for financial reasons. So, you know, if they start in Holland, they might get like 10 million euros for starting in Utrecht or Breda or Rotterdam. Yeah, it's all about the money. And so um, I wonder why they have done that. Uh, it's strange for me because they always try and – the Tour de France is always trying to get better and, and – um, so they must be in a good spot financially to do that. And even though they do charge each like province or town to, I mean, Tour de France, you pay for the start and you pay for the finish mm -hmm. and you even pay when the tour comes through your town. So if you don't pay, they ride around your town. Yeah. Well, and we've seen like in some ridiculous weather where they haven't been able to start or they've had to reroute that they'll get them often to ride five kilometres, start ride five, and then get in the vans. And then get, oh, wow. Yeah, because okay. they've 
a lot of money's changed hands. Yeah, it happens at yeah. the Giro too. Yeah. No, it has happened, yeah. and they and, and I suppose they still have to make money. It, it, the only thing that shits me is that the riders don't get a cent of it. Yeah, yeah. But yes. that's we're opening there's up a, a whole, whole can, other, of, can of worms. But <laughs> yeah. getting back to the stages, I mean, they've got they've got a they're going up Mob on two this year, um, and in the Alps, they're they've got uh, five thousand five hundred meters of climbing on stage eighteen, which is the most ever. In any stage of the tour, ever, of wow, ever. Okay. ever. So, um, I yeah, I mean they've obviously they wanted to make it as hard. They want to try and make each race harder and harder and harder. And I, th oh, this is not a good Tour de France for Remco, for mm -hmm. Remco Vanderpol. Um, I think the French have gone okay. We we've got some good climbers in Martinez um, and Gudu, but I still don't think they're going to be anywhere near where Vingegaard and and Pogacar are so yeah I mean it's going to be a two horse race again but yeah some of the some of the climbs are, are ridiculous they do they go up the Tourmalet this year the Aspen uh, Horticam they go up the Super Bagnes which is a climb that I know very very well I like to call that one Super Bangers we do we, that's actually what yeah. we call it uh, Super Bangers I tell you what um, it's good for the it's good for the sprinters seven about seven stages it is good very oh, good. Well, good you mentioned that, yeah. Merxie. Yeah, I've got my finger on the pulse. <laughs> well, we return uh, to the time where Joel and I refused to mutter the name Mark Cavendish because it was will he, won't he, retire, whatnot. Two weeks I said he won't. Well, two weeks ago he said, <laughs> I'm not 100% saying I'm done, but I'm done from the Tour de France. That's all he gave us, that he's done from the Tour de France. We talked about it. Everybody talked about it. He's a little bit the boy who cries wolf uh, because Hank, he's now said, ooh, seven stages, seven sprint stages, maybe. In fact, what he said is never say never. And what I want to say is there is a time to say never. But you did say never. He did, he say, did never. say never. Don't say never, say never after you've just said never. never. He's reversing his, his never. Well, it's been a what, never fest. Kate, I've got a question for you. What is that song from Frozen? Let it go, oh. let it go. Yes, that I was going to start the. Yeah. Do you want that's what I snowman? think. That's <laughs> different song. Yeah. Come on, let's go and play. <laughs> so, so, what has it got to do with snowmen? Hey, Hank? you're a good songer. You're songer. a good, you're a good yeah. songer. Good songer. Uh, <laughs> a song. Oh, no way. He's come on. I mean, I mean it's time. You're Hold saying on. it's not. It's not going to happen. Or no, it probably it will happen, happen. But come on, it shouldn't happen. Yeah. Okay. If you saw. A stage that was brilliant for your style. Is it feasible that you or any of your how retired is, cohort could go? Oh, never how, say never. How old is he? How old is he? Thirty-nine. Oh, let's get confirmation of that. Just go send that to our research Can department. I, yeah, no. Nah. But hang on, hang on, hang. <laughs> okay, mate, if go. People do He's things 39. for yeah. bucket loads of money. Like I've dressed up today like this for money. Right? Have you now? If who's who's paying Merxie? Well, Where's well, the invoice going? Bike bug, thank you to bike bug for the show. <laughs> um, but if he's getting offered a bucket load of money, he loves riding his bike. Good luck to him, don't you think? Yeah, no, I just yeah. reckon it's time. To, there's yeah, a lot no. faster guys out there, and everyone just was backed him to get the record. He's got the record, and you know he's talking about how great it's been. He's career and everything else and then he goes to the Tour de France and goes oh, I reckon I might go around again I don't know quite frankly the anxiety that I felt two years ago when it was going to be his final and mm. then he broke his collarbone mm. oh I, I don't think I can I think I that'll give that. me heart issues but I get that if he's got unfinished business he finished the business yeah well this indicates perhaps he'll never finish his business he's spoken mm. a little bit about idle hands uh in the past as well as though when i don't have a, a bike to ride or something to set my mind on i get a bit you know um, he has children right? restless and he, stuff like he does. that yeah. but at some point he has to address that because he sure does even if it is realistically an option in the year that he'll turn 40 to keep going. At some point, he's going to have to figure out what to do with the idle hands. Well, he could help the young guys. He could. Well, I, I would suspect... Isn't that what you do when you retire? You go and help the next generation oh, of kids well, that's and what, cycling. That's, that's what you've right. been doing. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Well, come on. There's, there's, uh, And I'm not saying... Like, I like, love watching him race. Don't get me wrong. I think he's a champion of the sport. He does mm. lots of good things for the sport. But um, I don't know. Is he just trying to chase that? Or is he thinking Pog's... Mm. Brought up his clacker, and I'm going to try and win another three next year and put him out of reach. Put clacker. him out there, yeah. Great, but great he's word, winning clacker. five a year, though. 
I think Hogs winning five a year, he's going to have he's him covered catch him. in like three years. I think he could give more to the sport now by being a pundit. Like, what a great mm. commentator he'll be. He'd be a great uh, commentator. They might need one of the red switches to beep him out. To no. start. A cough button. Why do they yeah. do that? But they should let that flow, don't you reckon? Oh, gosh. Oh, hang but on. There's some children. of our markets, there's well, children. there's children, but also some of the markets are very conservative. Mm. Yeah, okay. Well, yeah. I mean, but, Robbie is the best guy. Robbie McEwen is fantastic when it comes yeah. to what, like, if you've got a sprint stage, Robbie will tell you what's going to happen. Like, Cab will be that person. Yeah. yeah. So he, don't worry about the money. If he's chasing the cash, like, People want to hear what he's got to say. Why don't you go on to television next year and join Carlton Kirby 100%. and Dave Miller yeah. and, mm. and that whole crew over there and Matt Stevens and, um, you know, they've got a good crew over there. He'd fit in perfectly with them. Mm. So, If he comes back, never left, if he keeps going and, and adds another couple of stages or three stages, what does that say about the... Then I'm wrong. <laughs> Yeah, we'll we'll, we'll, we'll all because I'm with you. I agree. It's like, mm. come on, mate. It's like David Warner in the cricket. It's like, no, no, no. You retired. You're done. Mm. Um, if he comes out, wins another three. Pog aside, what does that say about the the rest of the the young the young generation of sprinters yeah. coming up? If, if he's like, still that good, up. yeah, hundred percent. I don't think he is though. Yeah, I I, I think Jasper and even Caden Groves and and you know Jonathan Milan, if he does the tour next year, like oh, they're the next so generation. Of sprinters and and it's, you know it, they. It's a good point you bring up. Not to interrupt. Sorry, Hank. But no, you're right. You point out Caden Groves mm. and Philipson. Matthew Vanderpool has said, "No tour for me." Mm. That puts Caden in the prime position to be the lead out man he for will Philipson. Be. He mm. will be the lead out man. Bring take it to the bank now. I can that tell is, you right that's, now. That's yep. brilliant for Caden. Yeah, it is. And Caden has always wanted to do the Tour de France. There was lots of talk about him leaving the leaving um, Alperson de Koenig. Um, and from what I hear from from the word on the street um, up on the sunny coast, because that's where he's from. He's a gimpy boy. Queenslander, um, he really just wanted to do the tour. I mean, he's won nine Grand Tour stages himself currently. He knows that Jasper is the number one lead out man. Now, Vanderpool doesn't go. I can tell you right now, he is going to take, and he's got a big job, to, big shoes to fill big shoot. to be uh, to yeah. do the same job as Mathieu Vanderpool. And he's, he's, um, but we will see him at the point of the Tour de France next year in those stages for uh, Jasper. He, w- he would have almost, Caden Grove said, I I won't re-sign unless you can guarantee, but a handshake, what's a handshake? Mm. I mean, maybe they had it written into the contract. When we talked about it, remember we were saying like hashtag take (laughs) Caden. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Maybe, Merksy, Mm. did you send the file over uh, to to the team? Is that what you think's happened? They had a look at it. Yeah. Yeah. I know they listen. Yeah, they've listened to the three of us and they've gone, oh, they've got a good idea over there. Maybe we should take Caden to Mm. the tour. Yeah, well, he will be doing the Tour de France for sure next year, 100%, especially if – I mean, if Vanderbilt's actually come out and said, oh, I'm going to do – I want to concentrate on mountain bikes. I'm going to come out and win five classics and then catches. I'll see you for the Worlds. Uh, I'm going to do some mountain bikes. And I also believe that if you don't do a Grand grand Tours, it actually prolongs your career. Doing three-week stage races is no good for your body. Does it pro- what about your you, life? Does it prolong your life? I've a bit done too? six of them. Look at me. I'm actually really 21. <laughs> <laughs> Doing stage races is is really tough, and you uh, and unless you are a he's not a stage race rider, Vanderpool. He is a one day king, and he, I think he's worked that out now. And he hasn't been really successful in the Tour de France before. Yeah. So well, so question though, it's gone to shit with Pidcock at Ineos. With his dual focus, mm. is Matthew Vanderpool got the team a hundred percent behind him to keep doing mountain bike and spreading his focus? Well, or he we... owns part of the team. Okay, so that helps. That helps. that helps. So he is not only like he's he has a share in the team and also has shares in Canyon. So he's essentially the DS. I'm pretty sure he can do whatever he wants, but mm. they have a fantastic, they win a lot of bike races, that team. They've always won a lot of bike races. Ve- for their budget, they punch well above their weight. So, um, but yeah, I think that um, they will be very good in the classics He and you won't see him. So. Well, that's why Merxie, uh won't ever get fired. 
He, he owns it. He the... runs it. He makes the, <laughs> and the, dad's makes the decisions. Yeah. What are you going to do? Don't you, Eddie? Yeah. 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 A uh, yeah. little shout out to Merksy too. The the little graphic you've got on your monitor there that I just saw you whipping up this morning. Um, very impressive bit of animation that. Oh, the yeah. tour of just the France. stages, no big deal, guys. It's just the little things. It's the little things the fly on the Millhouse podcast. Three <laughs> D engine. Exactly. He went over and did a flyover this morning. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> okay, interesting. Um, some disappointing news. Now we speak about this a lot. Is the ability to watch. Our, our favourite races, and sometimes that is hampered. Sometimes it's hampered by the fact that the broadcast is average and they go into a tunnel and we lose a signal, but sometimes it just flat out is not there. Now, this one, this knocks my socks off because after 2025, no tour on free-to-air, and I feel like I'm going to finish this sentence by saying in Australia, and we'd be like, yeah, that sucks, but I'm not. In Britain. Mm. In Britain. Mm. that's crazy i think it's it's sad it is sad yeah it's it's sad it's been a very long held tradition and certainly i saw uh phil liggett commenting on it uh, that he was a bit disappointed with that and i think for the broader audience i don't understand why in this day and age we can't have access on free to air and on paid they're different services they provide different things they're really a uh, good example that I've seen and Merxy's worked on it uh, from behind the scenes is the cricket where you have a free-to-air network and then a pay network and you can choose which one mm -hmm. to watch. It's the same with uh, the rugby league and they're different broadcasts. They are. And then you can choose which commentator you prefer mm -hmm. and that pushes the competition because if they're not good, they'll mm. pay their money to watch elsewhere or, it, you know, mm. keeps them a bit honest. No, and you don't grow your sport if you you have one option and you're lumped with watching it or not watching it because there are a lot of people on the fringes who won't watch at all cost. You know, there's some who will watch regardless, but there's a lot of people who won't watch if it's not a great product. And so it kind of means that they don't even have to go above and beyond. They don't have to innovate. They don't have to make the broadcast any mm. better because it's the literally the only place to find it yeah. if you can pay for it. I was disappointed recently because the uh, the Socceroos heading to Japan um, for that historic encounter, the World Cup qualifier, that had so much history around it. And it was the most hyped game the Socceroos have had in, in some time, probably since the Qatar World Cup 16s. And you're like, okay, this is great. This is a good reason to get behind the Socceroos, our national team. And, you know, the Matilda's been doing good. It'd be great to see the Socceroos back on top. TV on. Match hidden behind a paywall. Ah. And I started to think that's when it, like I get it with what you say with rugby league, they have a carve up where certain games will only mm. be on pay TV or whatever, but you still have that access. Mm. This was the first genuine example I'd seen of a, a, a high tier feature fixture like that being completely behind a paywall. Because if it's something like a Bledisloe Cup, you know what I mean? A mm. final of some sort of state of origin, whatever. Not state of origin, mm. but those others you're going to have an option to watch it. And straight away, Football Australia said, oh, we will rectify this and it'll be on free-to-air, blah, 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 moving forward. But the fact is it wasn't. Mm. I would think Tour de France in Britain is in that category. I, mm. Look, and, and I say this with all respect, maybe it's not quite there in Australia, but in Britain, in well, Europe in general, surely. I We've commented before on the fact that in Australia even, like we're so lucky that SBS free-to-air. Yeah. But sometimes people have talked about that it's disappointing that we don't have another option. Mm -hmm. You know, that they would pay potentially and then you, you – they're kind of different products. Like well, a, lot same of race, a lot of people pay for it in Australia because they don't want to listen to the product on SBS. Yeah, they don't and, like it. And mm. I think that different options mm. just make it a good market. Like, yeah. I mean, we complain about the airlines in Australia between Qantas and Virgin, but imagine if there was only Qantas, yeah. how much worse it would be. Mm. It's a unique sport mm. though. A lot of people watch it. It's the only bike race they ever watch, right? Yeah. Mm. yeah. And they stumble upon it. Kids just, stumble upon it. Yes. I just hope we the money triples that. back to the riders and we actually see increases in wages or better than anything else, but it won't because it won't. the greedy corporates will just take their, you know, twelve ninety five well, for but, their for that person. But also, ASO are a family company. <laughs> Sorry? ASO, it's a family company. They don't charge, in terms of market, they don't charge a lot for rights. Mm. They charge enough 
to look after themselves and push their costs, but they don't charge they enough. They want eyeballs. To, oh, yeah, no. they, they don't charge enough to then share the revenue. Whereas if you look at these massive hundreds of millions into the billion dollar deals that some of the football codes yeah. get, yeah, yeah. then they can share it. But mm. it's, maybe that's what we need. And I know that maybe suck for yeah. the person who just wants to watch the Tour de France, but maybe you have to pay your eighteen ninety five for July. But Eurosport, yeah. Eurosport are taking over cycling, no doubt about it. Yeah. Even yeah. Garrett Thomas's podcast, they bought it. They own it now. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah. we've been pushing back, haven't we, Merxie? Yeah, they're, yeah, yeah, they're trying to yeah. run it up, trying to negotiate. Yeah, we remain I mean, independent. Yeah, I mean, screw those guys at Eurosport, but if you do want to take over our podcast, oh, please give us a call. <laughs> at the same time, shout out Eurosport as Merxie. Uh, yeah. I, I reckon yeah. the riders should strike until they start getting. Until they Get start a fair getting cut paid of it. From it's not a it's not TV a but they like their money. Amount of money. No, well, they would if the French teams wouldn't. If the the French teams will never strike, but the no. other teams. I reckon should strike yeah. and go. We want to. We want a revenue share because you know yeah. our, our sport isn't stable. Yeah. So there's, there's. It's very divided amongst the teams. You're right. The French teams wouldn't strike. That tour no means to. They would. They would pay. Matteo to would ride rather it. go bankrupt. Yeah. Than, oh, but they're not riding the tour. There are teams and riders who would actively pay to be able to ride. Yeah. Like forget yeah. being paid. Mm. It's an honour and a privilege to be part, of it. To be part yeah. of it. But even this, this prestige around this, it's the Tour de France for F's sake. People are going to pay. Mm. You're the one out there delivering. There's this, this decision itself, as much as it sucks for that many people that won't be able to see it, it will absolutely attract more revenue from mm. those that do. Mm. Pay mm. up. Pay up. They're the ones that yeah. they're the ones delivering. Well, it's, it's the you know. it's the ladies side that is really delivering, like in TV numbers, you know, higher than. Well, the, the ladies soccer year, so. last year was the most watched ever sporting event in history in Australia, correct? Yeah, yeah. there was the Matilda semi. Yeah, the Matilda it, it, semi is the highest, England, yeah. bigger than anything else ever. And it earned them a uh, a motif outside Lang Park there to to mm. celebrate the impact. And this is the sort of impact you can have when you give that exposure. Mm. To your sport. And if you're not giving that exposure, make sure your athletes are getting paid, basically. I mean, people complained about the statue because... Well, it's not a statue. Do. It's not It's not a well, statue. It's like a mural. People yeah. complain yeah. <laughs> if it's brilliant. People complain. That, that's right. There's they lots of Karens out there. They out of complaining. The Matil- they complained about the Matilda statue because they said they haven't won anything. It's like, it's not about that. It's about the movement that this team has represented and the launch pad. And Did the you see the goal? Given mm. the game. Did you see the goal this week? It was incredible. From the 80, 80, 80 meters, yeah, it's her I think first she's here. international goal too. Oh, that was I was I love it. I used to play soccer. I really love soccer, oh. and and seeing that that was just brilliant, wasn't it? The Matildas are why at eight a.m. on a Saturday morning, uh, Merksy and I are standing on the side of a under sevens. Yep. <laughs> soccer pitch. Wearing these outfits, I'm sure. Watching them <laughs> yeah. buzz around. Yes. You may yeah. get escorted this away weekend. from the soccer match <laughs> wearing that year too. Anyway, we oh, could boy. we could spend several episodes talking about broadcasting and where that money Let's do it. should go. We'll, we'll come back on it because I just because we've got to talk crazy. about the ladies. You did mention the ladies. Let's talk about Demi Vollering. Breaking news here. No one saw this coming. She's confirmed the new contract. Kate, what? Said no one. Uh, in yes, she she has confirmed finally that she's off to FTJ for two years. But what was wrong? I don't know. What, there was no noise about her being unhappy. Oh no, none at all. Well, what's interesting is that she's waited so long to announce it because months ago we were mm. talking about FTJ. But mm. she follows Lars Bohm, who's uh, the team director from SD Works, who left last week. It's rumored to be quite a big contract, but less than a million dollars a year. Euro. Uh, euros, sorry, yeah. a million euros a year. Which is which, more than a million Australian. Which is more than a million Australian. But double. if you compare it to the men's contracts who are winning Tour de France's, mm-hmm. it's pretty piss poor, really. Yeah. I mean, well, uh, And the, if you consider more people watch the women's Tour de France last year than the men's. Over the nine days. Over the nine days. Mm. It's, it's a market. But, uh, I mean, that's what is exciting is this year's tour for her in the new colours uh, it's nine days, not eight. So they've tacked on an extra day. So they're actually okay. getting hmm. – every year you're seeing progression in women's sport and salaries and, yep. t- and TV and everything else. So they're on the right track, mm-hmm. They are, I think. Well, they have um, – the, the women's tour has a time trial up the Parasword, which makes me feel uh, quite nauseous. Uh, but it's interesting the way they do the women's tour is they do – Flat, flat, (laughs) 
you know, middle, middle, mountain, mountain. It's really mm. segmented, whereas in the men's tour, yep. it's yep. flat one day, middle, mat, like it really mixes it around. But the women's is almost a uh, set that you could, the sprinters could go home after day five yep. because it's only four days of very big mountains after that, uh, including mm. um, going up the Col de Madeleine. So. Oh, that's the most beautiful climb, the Col de Madeleine. And that's sorry, the men's, gorgeous. it's the men who are going up the Parasol, not the women. I have well, the, too many the men, notes Well, the men's time trial finishes up the on, on the airport strip. Yes. Up the Col de, yes. up the, the, the Parasud, which goes to the yeah. Paragood, and then they finish on the on the yeah. airstrip, and it's nasty. So mm-hmm. actually, that's, that's where Vingegaard won the Tour de France two years ago. Okay, yes. Yes. Where Wout Van Aert did the full ball terror turn. And then swung off. He dropped. He dropped. Wout dropped. Yeah. Um, I just see that. I've got Wout Van Aert in there. Yeah, the nicely done. Uh, he uh, is the squirrel he... PS, but yeah, we, <laughs> he is a we said it here last week and then you sent a little meme through to uh, the group. And, I, and he has the worst voice <laughs> he really, he's better off on a bike. He should yeah. stay with his day job. Uh, <laughs> a good looking rooster can ride a bike real fast, but Can't don't sing. sing. Hey, with a face like that, you can uh, just keep your mouth shut. Uh, uh, yeah. um, but back to the women. So notably, there is no time trial. I did have the, I had the wrong page of notes in front of me, which I think it's a good thing, Hank, because over for nine, the time trial. there for is no time not. trial for the women's. Over nine stages, I don't know with that kind of race breakup between middle stages, flat and climbs, that a time trial would add any value. What do you? What's I your reckon take a on time it? trial is great. I actually oh, yeah. reckon even a, in nine stages. I reckon stages? a team time trial would be great. Teams for the girls. time trial in nine stages. Yeah, why not? Start it with the team time trial. A couple of flat stages, a couple of hilly stages. I think, yeah, I just the romanticism of a team time trial. It's so 80s and 90s. Oh, it's I'm, amazing. We've had this conversation. I am so anti-Teams time trials. Oh, no. And I, look, I know mm. that you are a champion um, of the Commonwealth, if not other events in the Teams time trial. Well, it's a team but... sport, right? It's And you want... Sure. You, I mean, imagine, uh, say, Lotto, for example, having, you know, like eight big girls who can time trial, putting two minutes into Demi Vollering's team. That's true. But the, the I bring it up every time we talk about teams' time trials. It would be heightened in the women. There is no salary cap. Mm. And so you do still have massive differences between the top teams and the emerging teams. And for something like the Tour de France, that would almost certainly ensure that a rider on a smaller team has zero chance in the GC. Yeah, but you got to remember it's the first four across the line, right? So, yes, there's four strong girls in the big teams like SD Works and now Francis Yumbo de Joux and, and Yumbo. Yeah. I get that. But, um, you know, it's a team sport. <laughs> It's not Yumbo anymore. Yumbo. Is it? They, they, they actually left the sport two years ago. I know, that's right. Visma Lisa Bike. I just think it's a cool name, Yumbo Visma. Come on. What Yumbo. It was cool. Yeah. So, 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 is Demi's team strong enough to, for her to win the Tour de France? Well, they just signed a girl out of Saint Michel who was their best rider. So, um, and talking about that, um, Ella Simpson from ARA Skip Capital actually just signed with Saint Michel. So, congratulations to her. Yeah, so, it's, um, that's great. And she's been told she's going straight to the tour. So straight out of ARA Skip Capital, straight into go. the Tour de France, yeah. which is great. And that's something that you can't do in the men's. In the men's, you can't just go from ARA Skip Capital straight into the Tour de France. The depth's not, you know, there's so much depth in men's cycle. Yeah, it's, it's still a steeper rise. Well, um, Merksy, Avita Mutsic is there, as is Juliette Labou. So I think she'll have a pretty good team. But if we consider that, this year she lost the tour to Cassie Doma and it, it, people said that perhaps it was bad luck, you know, maybe the team could have helped a little bit more, maybe Trek rode against her, blah, 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 blah. blah. Mm. When SD works are dead set against her, mm. now that she's officially in another team, I actually think it's going to be a tough year for Demi. I reckon it will be. No, and it's kind of nice, right? Because two years ago, SD Works won absolutely everything. Mm. And, you know, star started field, and now it's kind of, they split off a little bit. So, yeah. That's I, a natural I, evolution. See, right? I, I think it's good to have, you know, riders 
who are split across and not just two powerhouse teams. Now there's four or five which are really, you know, um, have depth. So well, Stage eight finishes on the Col de Madeleine. It's 18.6 kilometres with an average gradient of 8.1%. Mm. Let's be honest, on that kind of climb, team is incidental. They'll get it, you to the it, bottom, but after that... Yeah, no, exactly. I mean, the, the thing is, she was still that strong this year, but she didn't win. That's true. So anything can happen in this sport, and that's I suppose that's the beauty of it. It's you know we all just say it's a foregone conclusion with Pog and Vingegaard next year. Something will happen. Mm-hmm. You know mm-hmm. they are probably they all have fifty five days racing before they get there, and same yeah. with the girls. So um, there's always poor form, sickness, injury. You know something can happen. Um, Very good Tour de France femme for Sarah Gigante and Anya oh, Lau. Yes. So. Sarah Gigante. Okay. Mm. Do, you re- do you reckon she's going to go another Jiggles. level next year, Kate? I think her, she can. Because she's kind of yeah. come back from her sickness to be one of the world's best climbers this year, at least in the top 10 of the world's best climbers. Oh. I hope she can make that next step. Because that next step puts her right there, right? Yeah, she'll definitely, I think, be much closer on the big mountain stages to victory. In in the GC hunt, I think she still needs a few more years, even from a skills perspective. Mm. But her climbing prowess is phenomenal. Yeah, and, oh, that's and that's exciting. Yeah, so I think she's very comfortable in that team, and she's got she's Anya Lau happy. there, and yeah. she's happy. And finally, after a pretty rough trot, mm. she's she can just have some clear air to just race her bike. So. Yeah. Oh, that's exciting. We wish that for all of the athletes. It sure do. Okay, that's really cool. So, news for Demi. That's news great. News for Demi. We finally know where she's going. Yeah, I'm still a little bit curious about the rest of the team and, you know, some of the past uh, incidents at SD Works and whatnot. Well, if they're, they're going, oh, yeah, I'm okay. curious as to why she held off for so long announcing yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. I thought then there would be some really big fanfare. There's a bit well, of a stink about November. it. It was kind of a. Hmm. It's still only. It's still. We, everyone forgets it's still only October, right? You're yeah. still contracted for another two months. Yeah, that's with true. Her team and yeah. she's now on holidays. And yeah, I mean, obviously she's been somewhat. A polarizing figure in that. No, I'm trying to be nice here. Divisive. Um, well, she's an incredible yeah. athlete, but she has certainly. She is the world's best rider. Had so. people mm. chatting, yeah. But she's gone to a French team for the Tour de France. They're going to expect some big things, especially with the coin that they're paying her. So okay. the pressure is going to be on her for will, that fr- with with that team. Mm. So will it be more demi nation or a bit of <laughs> demi station? You're going to have to probably get behind a pay station. To I like where you went with that. Sure. It will all be behind paywalls as well. Okay, some more bad luck for Katie Archibald. So you wanted to talk about this uh, bung shoulders, oh. and I want to ask you about bung shoulders and what. What they can do. Yes. Seems like the shoulder plays a reasonable role in bike riding. I think, Katie Archibald, can I just say she's without question one of my favourite athletes. Like so incredibly talented. Her CV, her performance at Olympic Games, at World Championships, just incredible. She's had a really rough trot, missed the Olympics uh, with a broken ankle that she did in Mm. her backyard. But I saw an interview she did uh, with Laura Kenny, who has retired and kind of joined the media bandwagon. So welcome, Laura. Uh, Is She said to Laura, everybody was saying to Katie, you must be so devastated about the Olympics and missing out on that. And she said, honestly, a year before that, her partner, Rab Wardell, passed away uh, Mm. in his sleep. And she said... I think about that and what I went through. Do I really care about my ankle? Mm. She's like, yeah, it's a massive There's bummer. There's some perspective there. But yeah. Yeah. yeah, and so I see this and I think, oh, she'd be really annoyed at this. Bloody hell. Another injury, dislocated shoulder, and in a silly way, kind of just slipped off on the uh, on the bottom of the track. And scenes too with the resetting of said shoulder. Yes, couldn't they <laughs> couldn't get it back oh. in. Uh, but I think for her... This will bother her and it's annoying and She's got painful. Time. But I don't think more than that, I don't think it'll have much so impact. Her resilience is such after what she's been through that little things like this is just an irksome little fly. You right? swat it off, you get on with it. Yeah. I mean it's I don't I haven't done that to my shoulder, but Merxy, you've had a bung shoulder a few times. How painful is it? Like 
No, it's I, incredible. I think that it's she'll very be all right, but and and she, you know they couldn't get it back in. I got hit by a car on the man ride a few years ago. Jesus. And it dislocated. They couldn't put it back in. Had to go to hospital. And you called me, remember? I do. I do remember. Uh, I was following. Like to go and pick up something from the shops. No, or... <laughs> I was following uh, Luke on a. <laughs> You Sorry. Dingo on a um, Strava beacon yeah. and it disappeared. Oh, okay. And I was Sorry. freaking out Sorry, and Maxie. I was calling, calling, calling. And uh, no. then it reappeared at the hospital. And so I was freaking out, calling, calling. Anyway, he answers. They'd clearly given him the green whistle. Um, he was kind of giggling, telling me about how his shoulder had been dislocated. Uh, but then he said to me, they still need to put it back in. Mm-hmm. So I'm here, they still need to put it back in. And then I hear in the background, a nurse pipes in with, oh, love, we've already popped it back in for you. <laughs> and Merksy was like, ah, they've done it already. Give us another one of them green whistles, will you? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, so the green whistle for the I, win. I actually um, did Tour of Greece this year and one of our riders, Tyler Tomkinson, Brizzy boy, lovely young man, he um, he hit the deck hard and he was on the ground and um, his shoulder was out. Oof. And the the race doctor was there very quickly, um, and I'm just yelling at him. No idea whether he can speak English, but I'm like, his shoulder is out. And anyway, we grabbed him, and I was holding his like rib cage from this side, and then he just grabbed the arm and he put it up like Ugh. that, pulled it up, and it just went straight back in. Yeah. Oh. Anyway, he got straight back on and he sat on the back of the car with me for 8K and I put him straight into the back of the bunch. He was so, he dislocated his shoulder straight on, no green whistle, did it all on the side of the road, straight back into the bunch. And he finished the tour. So, anyway, we now know how to put a shoulder back in if someone (laughs) crashes. And talking about that, I was on the bunch ride this morning and uh, one of the young blokes I coached um, hit the deck and he's now currently in hospital, so hopefully he's okay. um, All the wishes to him. Yes. Wishes and wishes. It's Cam Meyer. uh, He had dicky shoulders and he dislocated both of them diving into a wave (laughs) at the beach. And then it he happens. had them both fixed. God, yep. bike riders but, just got good, strong legs and uh, the rest is well, there. Well, it was... They're like T-Rexes. They, you know? Yeah. Little arms, massive legs. But well, be, his shoulders were more important on a bike than mine because he's a Madison... Madison. Yeah. He was world yeah. champion yeah. in that event, yes. so that's, In about 18 uh, other events Would as make well, it a little bit difficult. Oh, my God. Even more difficult than just hanging on. Tells you that mm. you need to go to the gym, even if you are a cyclist, that's for sure. Yeah. Uh, but so. uh, Merksy, look, he can give... Merksy, you can give Katie... A bit of a call and let her know that uh, her shoulder will be just fine. We're thinking some of her. reassurance. We're yeah. thinking of her. Send some um, love. And that message, of course, if you're walking through hell, keep walking. Keep walking. Um, <laughs> now. The I love his radio life. voice. <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually sitting here suffering in silence. I've got a slight sprain on my shoulder and, as we speak. Well, I've also it's figured really out. it's really been hurting. You no, got... hate getting old. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I've been sitting here going, oh, yeah, you guys, yeah, yeah, it's all this shoulder talk. I'm actually like, living it right now and it sucks. Man, um, at the beginning, I was trying to figure out who the Puma athlete was. Usain Bolt. No, I'm the Panther. Are you dressed it's as Halloween. Usain Bolt? Yeah, sure. Yeah, Halloween. Let's, let's go with that. Uh, yep. Joel, I thought you hurt your neck when your head flung around when Kate walked into the studio. Dressed as a dressed skeleton. Dressed as a <laughs> cat suit. Cat, skeleton. Cat, cat, skeleton. cat skeleton. Cat skeleton. skeleton. Uh, yeah. No, no, it wasn't. Yeah. For, it was a, a pre-existing injury, but of course I don't complain, so no. it's all good. Um, that's, a whole nother, sorry, that's a whole nother story. That's a whole nother episode. We're, we're doing a dedicated <laughs> episode oh for complaining. Don't worry, it's coming up uh, on the Wheelhouse Stay Cycling tuned. Podcast. <laughs> Pro Velo Super League, best of intentions. I think good, you know, pretty good people behind it, and something that we need. But timing, uh, climate, bit tricky. So they're running into a little bit of. I believe resistance around advertising money and that sort of thing, which is probably a reflection of the times we're living in. Uh, what's the latest here, Catherine? How are they going to get out of this? Yeah, look, it, it's certainly, I think they, they've coined it as a bit of a leap of faith. Um, the Aussie NRS was on its knees. I think you'd agree, Hank. Mm. It couldn't continue how it was going. So they've tried something different. It has been so far a bit of a tough, tough transition because we've also seen uh, the drop out of a few teams. So a lot of the sign-ups are individuals mm. rather than yet teams. But they do have time um, still. They've had they've announced some sensational races, including 
uh, a connection with the Tour Down Under and some racing down there, which I think will be and really meaningful. And in Sydney, yeah. uh, they've got a great one in Brisbane uh, yeah, as well. So the events are there. And look, hopefully with Jerry Ryan as one of the, ma well, the major backer, hmm. that will tide them over enough in a kind of field of dreams way. If you build it, they will come. They are building it. It is happening. Hopefully when they do have the product, that will allow the sponsors who are unsure if they can commit to, to make that final commitment. Oh, I, I think it's like any business, right, that you do. The first 18 months you struggle to break even and move forward. But once you break through that barrier, then it just – you know, become successful. I think that's where they're at. And yes, it is, we're going through what we, they don't call it a recession, but we are having a recession in Australia at the moment. And I think that the sponsors do, who do get on board now are going to really appreciate what the product's going to be because mm. they're going to be the first ever sponsors of the Pro Velo Super League. And it may be something that is like what the World Series was for cricket when there was just test matches, you know. Yep. A new format came out, bang, this is unbelievable. Everyone wanted a part of it. Benson Hedges, you know, came on and um, back in back in those days. So I think that um, they've got a really good product. Their yep. racing is exciting, and the reason why, and I'll tell you, is they're bringing it back to the people. It's not out in some freaking field with someone with a flag. It's like downtown Sydney, Sydney Opera House. It's yeah. like yeah. in Adelaide, just before the start of TDU. It's going to be televised. Like that stuff where people are already going to be cafes, restaurants where people are instead of just out in the backwoods somewhere in the middle of Gippsland where, you know, out in some tiny town where no one's driving three hours in the middle of winter to go to, it's all condensed. It's going to be week after week after week. And um, the sponsors that do get on board are going to be great. So I like what you said, Kate, build it and they will come. I think yep. the ones that get on early are going to get really good value for money straight up because I reckon the prices will go right up after that because, I think so too. because it'll be, I, I, I think it's a good product. So I believe in the product and, um, and the thing is going to be on TV, all of it. Well, there you go. That conversation again. Yeah. Eyeballs, and eyeballs. what I think is interesting, Joel, is we talk about, you know, not a lot of teams have signed up that some teams have folded, but because of their direct link to the world tour, uh, for the winners, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It allows this incredible opportunity for individual athletes. And in fact, some athletes may favor that over riding with the team there because if they win and they determine that, they get the opportunity. Where if you're riding with a team, you you've might not ride for someone you've else. You've got to ride for someone else. You might not get that opportunity mm. uh, as an individual. So I think that people are focusing on not a lot of teams signed up yet. But the number of individuals is beyond expectation. I think that's really exciting. Yeah, wait and see. The yeah, world. I mean, I mean, they've got the numbers. Yeah, they've got the numbers, and they've got the numbers. And athletes yeah. who maybe haven't been able to commit to an NRS team or have got other interests, university, other commitments, this gives them a pretty defined window of performance to prove themselves and to talent search. And we've never really had that before with the NRS. In fact, it's been very <laughs> difficult for athletes who have also been at university or working mm. to stay fit all year because mm. there's been so much spread between events. Yep, exactly. This allows more opportunity for those individuals. Yeah, 12 weeks, run, done and won. Yeah. All over. And yeah. then you can go to Europe. Go so, study hard, go work hard, yeah. see you next year. No, I really, I really hope that people get on board because the sponsors get on board. I mean, it's going to go ahead mm. whether they get on or not, but if you yeah. are the first big sponsor, you're gonna be re you're gonna yep. be known straight up for that for forever that you know you are the first sponsors and yeah so all the, all the all the building dreams, blocks baby. are in place just you got to have faith just to give this little line navigate but this you gotta to have faith get it over the line basically oh you gotta there's that have song faith. again yeah yeah She's and thank you, you to Kate L Jones faith, the for the uh, the quote as well. <laughs> Um, now, almost time to go for the week. The nice Noosa Crit happening this weekend. I'll be there. Um, not, but are you going I was about to say, now? I won't be there. Uh, I can't. I've got a sore shoulder. No, so. I, I'm doing Sports Sunday this weekend, so I'll be talking about all sorts of sports. Sports talk. I'll be, sports up. Talk. I'll be up there. Excellent. I'll be up there having a look. But it's five yeah. grand. It's the five biggest, grand. That's impressive. It's the biggest prize purse 
this year for any cycling race. Are you going to mark Cavendish it? Are you like never say never? Me? Yeah, back on the bike. <laughs> oh, you wouldn't want to see that. Oh, on TV. never say never. No. <laughs> No. no, the only way I'm Hank getting back to never. the Noosa crit is in a time capsule. Okay. All right, um, but it will be cool because it's such a uh, uh, it's a such a fun event up there. So we're gonna s- and Jared Drisner's Caden Groves, oh, Brian Caden Groves, and also um, oh. Blake Quick from Jayco. So heard, he, heard he's got a good finish on him. Blake he goes Quick. okay. He goes okay. Great. Come, Craig come Wiggins. On. Craig Wiggins, sprinter. <laughs> is it still the same event? Is it, same event. They haven't stripped it back? or no. It's not less, it's not ex- more exposed than it used to be or anything like that? No, 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 no. no. And, the, and, the, and the ladies. No, I'm just curious. Just, it, it's <laughs> not like full frontal. It's just, it's all like just yeah. normal. Yeah, cool. Yeah. Uh, um, sorry, hang on. Yeah, yeah. Okay, no problem at all. Yeah, come into studio. So uh, we've got some news here, breaking news on the Wheelhouse Cycling podcast. Um, we are going to do something right now that changes the entire anatomy of this show. Uh, we've been working on this for a little while. So I'd like to in, in, invite our esteemed producer, Merksy, into the studio. And I really would like him to hurry up because I'm padding here and it's it's getting it's really getting hard to I fill this space. This isn't button. on the rundown, mate. It's not on the rundown. I can't come in. I've got to press the buttons. Okay, you press the buttons. Okay. Let's go now to Merksy. What do you got for us, Merksy? Well, you might recall a couple of weeks ago we talked about Hank in the nude. Uh, whoa. Yeah, we yeah. do. We did. <laughs> yeah. I thought you were like pushing something skeleton-y, no. but. Yeah. Wow. No, 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 nothing to do with No, Halloween. I'm not genuinely curious about the exposure and the full frontal nature of the noose yeah. kid, I, I know, you. I was like, I'm a bit confused. Good oh, segue now that yeah. I get it. You look a bit awkward, Hank. I'm just going to talk here. So he said that you will never find the photos, you know, that they don't exist. Well. <laughs> Turns out they do. I think $37 it cost. I found it. Look at this. Drum roll. All right. Where is it? There it is. So, oh, there, there it is there. there. Oh, that's not Hank, though. No, There's a but this is person. The, we He's bought it. The glove There's on. a person with not a lot of clothes on. <laughs> now, I'm just going to cut the Hank here. You've got to watch this episode, people. Don't just listen. No. Uh, Hank, I hope you're okay with this. No, I'm good. We've talked to HR. There's no Frank and Beans. We're good. <laughs> All right. Well, here we go. I'll hold this up. Move that out of the way. Here we go. Look at him. Oh, Ooh. oh those are the there days. There he is. Eh? Oh, look at the abs are you him. sure there's no Frank and Beans? What's that? Or is that an ab? No, it's his leg. Is that no, an that's, ab? that's my arm. <laughs> that's a they, finger. They call him the human tripod. Now <laughs> I can see why. Now, is that more. a six pack no, you're more. rocking? That's an eight hey? pack. You got a six pack. Yeah, I used or to. Or an eight pack. That's how that's how I used to be when I was, uh, you know, young and I'm having and, trouble turning the pages. Turn oh, oh, stop it! With the glove on. Oh, st- oh okay. <laughs> You've okay. got a glove on. Oh. Got a glove on. Oh, oh, look at this. There he is. <laughs> look at that. Yeah, ripped. Wow. Holy shit, is man! Is this the disc you were talking about spinning this is around the disc. on? This is the disc. Photographed so the from above. From the top, and they had this black disc, literally the size of this, and they spun me around on that. And yeah. they did shave me completely too. There was so not a follicle. The camera's above you, so yeah. you're doing laps. Circles, So each yeah. time you do the 180, the camera's getting... Yeah, you know the you. artsy photographers, you know, they're like, you know, they're trying to do the cycling, you know, how it goes in a circle yep. and cycling. Oh, so I they see. had me spun okay. around. So. And, and look at these eyes, guys. <laughs> oh. oh, look at that. That is... Oh, hold on. That little is... A little bit of dignity there with the hands over oh, the... Yeah, yeah. That was the, almost uh, Frank and Beans. Over the bitten. <laughs> yeah. Well, the yes. Bitten. Oh, my gosh. I didn't get a cent for that either. Oh. I didn't get a dollar So who out of did Maxi pay the $37? I'm so, going to get on to that. They need to start paying royalties. Anyway. They do. Hey. Content Thanks, that mate. just keeps on it's giving. paid for itself several times over. That was well worth well, the segue. I'm not done yet. Now I've got some oh. current photos of Hank um, that uh, we took Mate, last I told week. you to not. And, uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, they're in the hidden folder. I don't have an OnlyFans. I'm telling you. Oh, my you, gosh. Do Put not a have password on that file. I do not have an OnlyFans <laughs> currently. Thank you, Skeletor. <laughs> oh, thank you, uh, Usain. Thank you, Eddie M. Oh, that's, that's, that's me. You, that's buddy. you. Yeah. Sorry, I'm not meant to be Eddie M, but well, good job. Thank okay. you, Monster. <laughs> yeah, well done. Hank Vogels. Yeah, thank you for throwing me under the bus. Yep, yeah, no it's worries. All good. Fully clothed. That's okay. We see We're going to hashtag nude. And I'm still the thinking show's about... going to get a lot of watches. Yeah, hashtag yeah. nude. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 
No, just don't hashtag only fans followers. or anything no. like that. Oh my gosh. I'm right. still thinking about the photographer who's above you when you're spinning and then the when your head's facing the ground and that yeah. parts up and yeah. the struggles to getting like a real zoom in on. Yeah. yeah. And you have to have faith. They yes. never sent me those photos. I was going to say, you've got to have complete faith that they're not going to print. They're in a vault somewhere. Those photos. They probably, yeah, we had to sign, like they had to sign and we had to sign and did all that. And it was for the 96 Olympic Games. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was for the 96 and it was for all the athletes and somehow they scammed us all into doing nude stuff. So Anyway, can I get you to sign it? Because I reckon I can sell it. For about ten dollars more than I bought it for, if you're at least, it. sure. <laughs> at least. No worries, mate. We'll get, Thanks, on Hank. We'll get right on that. Such a good sport. Okay. Love you. Uh, uh, bikes. No problem with that. Say it back. Yep, yep. <laughs> News and nudity. The Wheelhouse Cycling Podcast. Like, share, subscribe. Tell everyone. Literally, please tell everyone. You know, because it's like, I don't know. It's like newsy porn all of a sudden. Oh. And you um, can't buy that magazine on Bike Bug either. No, no, no. We, no you can buy many wonderful things, but yeah. not, uh, not that. Our thanks to Bike Bug, bikebug.com. Uh, mm, go buy yourself a your new Colnago. Yes, yes. Get, uh, back to bikes, yeah. a Colnago. Go get yourself a Colnago. <laughs> yeah. Not the thing I was going to say. Uh, that is, is my great. absolute favourite bike, by the, by the way. Did, did, you, did you ride Love that on the Sots ride, Kat? Was it the Colnago? Yeah, I saw did. that in the pics. And yeah. it, it matched my jersey. Yeah. It was beautiful. Didn't you name it? I did. I named her Ophelia. Ophelia. Ah, uh, mm. oh, like Ophelia, like shit. <laughs> when you're climbing up the. Ophelia <laughs> pain. Yeah, oh, I'm really you. struggling. Oh, Ophelia. Right, right. Yeah. Right. Right. Is that what you meant? That's what I was. Or no, Ophelia but it works. of the of fame, like mythology. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what but the lady's name was who shaved me. O- too. Ophelia. <laughs> it was not. <laughs> Oh. Call to the big O. It's she the wheelhouse. The Hit the button, Mercy. Uh, Cycling the podcast. Button. We'll do it again. Okay, we're leading button. now. Trick or treat, everyone.